Well, the financial media not talking about those Reddit stocks as much as they used to these days. Uh, you know, maybe a, a shot or a barb here or there. Uh, probably they're waiting for the big pullback, right, the big crash to get back on their high horses and start wagging their fingers. Of course, it could be a real long wait if they're waiting for AMC to derail. That stock remains a juggernaut, and one of the heroes of the AMC Ape community is gaining even more stature. Joining me now uh, from Trey's Trades on YouTube, Trey Collins. And Trey, first I got to say congratulations, my man. I just read an article about you in Forbes, and uh, I'm even more impressed because there are certain things I didn't know. Uh, you're in the Army. You're an Army officer, obviously self-taught. you got a hell of a work ethic. If you can, let's just share with the audience, you know, to just how you became so big on YouTube, uh, you know, over, I know it's over 330,000 subscribers. Hey, Charles. Well, first off, thanks again for having me on. It's always an absolute pleasure to speak with who I consider to be one of the best in the financial media. I think, to be completely frank, I'm just a regular everyday guy on the street. And I think people really appreciate that because it shows that you can be some, some Joe or, or some Sally on the street and come on to the market and really learn what's actually happening here. Figure out the inner plumbings and mechanisms that allow people to make money. So, you know, I, I think if there's anything that separates, you know, what I do from maybe somebody else, it's just it's just that I am just a regular guy. And I'm not going to pretend like I'm anything else. So um, that's honestly what I, what I contribute to, you know, where we've gone. And I'm excited for what's to come, right. not just for the channel, but for the people. It's, it's really awesome to hear some stories. Yeah, you know, and, and of course, the article talks about your long term goal, right? Because uh, as you learn and you dig deeper and deeper, you educate other investors. That's why you're so popular. One thing that stuck with me when I looked at that the tweets the last few days uh, that I've seen from you, you talked a lot about the Federal Reserve, the repo program and things like that. You know, I don't think Wall Street believes that the apes even know anything about that. Why do you <laughs> think it should matter to individual investors? You know, I actually had a pretty long phone call with my, my good friend, Matt Coors. You had him on as a guest one time about the uh, the repo market. And we, we kind of came to the same conclusion. I, I'll quote him here. He said, it's kind of like the plumbing in your house. Like, you don't really care about it until something goes wrong. Then you really care about it. But essentially, it's just a transaction, right? There's a buyer and there's a seller. So in the repo market, if the feds are doing a repo, it means that essentially you've got banks and you've got the feds. And a reverse repo would be the exact opposite. So a repo is kind of loosening up the economy, right? It's, it's giving cash to banks so that you can kind of, you know, lower some interest rates, kind of combat some inflation, really get the economy moving. This happened back in March of 2020 so that you didn't have, you know, the entire economy crash. Now, fast forward to where we are now, right? You've got reverse repos, which are happening. And just looking at uh, what we've got right now, according to uh, fred.stlouisfed.org, on June 14th, it, it hit you know, $583 billion, which is a huge amount of reverse repo. And this is the exact opposite, right? So this is essentially, you know, you've got treasury bills and you've got cash and you're essentially swapping places. So the banks are giving back money and the feds are giving back these treasury bills and that tightens up the economy, right? So it's gonna raise interest rates, raises inflation. And these sort of things all affect the grand scheme of the stock market. And that's why it's important because it directly applies to exactly what people are investing in. Right. Uh, Trey, I got a minute to go. Uh, AMC has just been mind boggling. Uh, you know, the, the old saying is, hey, it can't go on forever. I would suspect that the short sellers are going to take another shot at, at the diamond hands and test them one more time. What are you doing to brace for that move? Uh, what's the resolve of the apes looking like? You know, I, uh, I actually I like that question. And I've got something that I would say to short sellers. I'll say this. It doesn't matter if people think you're right. You just have to be right. That's how the stock market works. There's somebody that's right and there's somebody that's wrong. I like to think that the apes are the ones that are going to be right. And I think the apes think that, too. And that's what I have to say about that. Well, I continue to watch. Uh, everyone else does as well. It's a fantastic thing. Uh, you know, just keep learning. That's I'm telling you, what you're doing is absolutely right. Keep learning. Keep teaching yourself. There'll be trial and error because everyone goes to that. But a lot of folks are looking up to you. And I want to also personally say thank you for your service to this country and your commitment to learning and sharing your knowledge in the stock market. Thank you so much. I hope it's a lifelong endeavor for you, Trey. We'll talk hey, to you thanks, again Charles. Soon. Appreciate it. All right. By the way, I want to bring in a recovering investment banker, also author of The War on Small Business, Carol Roth. And Carol, you know, you wrote last week about the roots of this investor revolution. You say it goes back to Occupy Wall Street. Explain. So I actually got this analogy, Charles, from one member of the Ape Army as I put out a question to them and to other retail investors and said, you know, what is it that you want people to know? And what they want people to know is they're fighting for free and fair markets. They want to make sure that the markets aren't tilted in favor of the big guys. And the way that they're doing it is they're putting their money where their mouth is. So this is a much more effective tactic. And I think the takeaway is this is not 
about envy. They're investing. They want to participate in this wealth creation. So I think that's the differentiation from the last time around. You've got people who are, who are trying to participate, trying to invest. And I think for those people who are not out there listening, take a moment to hear what everyone has to say. You know, Carol, of course, you, you always call yourself a recovering investment banker. <laughs> Do you marvel, though, at your colleagues, you kind of just alluded to it, that they just still don't get it as I toggle around on financial channels and I hear people from CEOs of large investment banks describe this Reddit investor revolution. They are so far off the mark. I mean, does that frustrate you? Uh, it does, and the recovery process uh, is a long time as an investment banker. You know, truly, I'm very disappointed. And yourself aside and a handful of other people aside, this is a tremendous opportunity for mentoring. You have people who are eager to learn, who want to learn. They just want some fairness. And instead of reaching out and providing that mentorship, I think a lot of people are being very condescending, people who are in those positions of power. Um, you just had Treyon, who's amazing. There are millions of people just like him all over. The Ape Army is some of the nicest, most thoughtful people. And they're really doing the work. This is not, you know, this quote unquote dumb money. I mean, that's incredible insult. Yeah. They are spending the time doing the research and the due diligence. So, you know, if you're somebody who's benefiting yeah. and, and, here, reach, reach out. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they're described so incorrectly all the time. Now, I want to I want to shift gears here because you talk a lot about the role of the Federal Reserve and uh, and all of the things that this excessive money printing has done. Is it likely that we would ever see that this central bank or any central bank really markedly lower their balance sheet or reverse all this stuff? I mean, in other words, is the damage done and will it just get worse? Yeah, I mean, that's the $7.9 trillion and counting question, isn't it? I mean, the, the Fed's supposed to have this dual mandate of price stability and full employment, but it seems like they have this uh, other thing that's driving them, which is propping up Wall Street and enabling go uh, reckless government spending. And really, that's the crux of the issue. You know, kind of put, put the right. Wall Street piece of it aside. We have $28.4 trillion in debt. So what's going to happen as interest rates rise? Trying to service the interest on that debt is going to overtake all the spending. So this is dr being driven by political cronyism, and it's not good for anybody's economic freedom. I don't have a lot of time, but I got to get it in because your book, War on Small Business, officially drops real soon on the 29th. My question to you is why should anyone care about the war on small business? Yeah, I mean, I think this is the most underreported story, not just of the last year, but of the last decade. It's about uh, economic freedom. And we have seen government mandate pick winners and losers, and in doing so, a massive consolidation, not just of power, but a transfer of wealth from Wall Street to Main Street. So if you are somebody who wants to spread the message about the little guy, if you want to advocate for the backbone of the economy, the book gives you the tools to do so. And unfortunately, we need more people to talk about this and to stand shoulder to shoulder so that we can make sure that we preserve that economic freedom. Folks, the book is The War on Wall Street. I'm sure you can pre-order it right now. I think it's going to be a must read. Carol, thank you so much. Always appreciate it, my friend.